Hey everybody, Jim Sammons here from the Kayak Fishing Show Live. I actually started the show a minute ago and realized I had not clicked the right button. And we so we started talking and we weren't actually broadcasting. <laughs> so anyway, we're starting this whole thing over. It's been that kind of morning. Uh, the Kayak Fishing Show Live is always brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Where we go. Doing one of their uh, new lighter loggers. A very nice drinkable beer. Uh, so a couple things. First off, uh, next Friday, I may or may not be doing a live show. I'm not really sure. It kind of depends on uh, our connectivity and everything. I will be down in Florida next week. So if we have some time and we're just sitting around, I mean, the guys, we, we may jump on live. I, I just don't know at this point. But try to check in with us and we'll let you know. Um, I will be, uh, again, at the Guy Harvey Resort in St. Augustine, Florida. And on Saturday, May 18th, from 2 to 5, we'll be doing a Kayak Fishing Academy where, uh, you know, you can join us and we'll be sharing stories about kayak fishing, tips, everything you want there. Uh, Bart Swab, who's a kayak fishing guide in that area, will be with us. So you can ask him specific questions about the area. And then uh, several members of the Jackson Kayak Fishing Team will be with us as well. And so it'll just be kind of a three hour free for all swapping stories and uh, sharing information. So uh, I hope you can join us. So um, on today's show, uh, we have some uh, really cool prize available. Uh, you're going to kind of have your choice of a Siegler reel. So any Siegler reel of your choice. But in order to win that, you need to participate. So make sure you bring on your questions. Do the whole comment, like, share. You know, uh, the more shares we get, the better off we uh, we are, and the more the sponsors like it. Uh, you know, they they put out uh, a lot of effort to be here, and um, you know, Wes particularly given a very generous gift of uh, a reel of your choice. So uh, make sure that you are sharing that with your friends. Um, also, uh, have you joined the Kayak Fishing Show group yet? I uh, want to make sure that everybody, if you want to be notified of these live shows, that you join that group because uh, just the way things are going with Facebook, it's getting harder and harder to let people know that we're uh, we're doing our shows and stuff we're up to. So uh, we hope that uh, you can join that group and then I'll, I'll keep the shows updated over there. Anyway, with no further ado, I'm going to bring up my very good friend, Wes Siegler from Siegler Reels. Wes, how are you, man? Take two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This wasn't my fault. <laughs> like, why wasn't it live? Wasn't it live? Oh, well, you actually have to hit the button to make it go live. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. Good so, to see you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we were talking before you, uh, you were just on a trip uh, in Florida yourself down in the Keys. Uh, what was that all about? Yeah, I just went down. I had to make a visit or two, and I ended up getting uh, two days of fishing in with Joel Dickey and just epic, epic two days. Uh, Saw those big fish, caught some big fish, um, tested product, you know, all did it on the, the uh, on the fly. Yep. So, Tarpon. yep. Even though like a permit will, like swim by you and you're like ready to go for a tarpon, you're like, what are you doing? Get out of here. You're going to distract me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've, I've said what? it before, you know, I don't, I don't get a chance to do it very often, but man, if we had tarpon here, I would fish for them every day. They, they are so much fun. And I've never done it on a fly. So kind of looking forward to maybe doing that one day, but anytime, any way of catching them is fun. Yeah. It was crazy. Cause we started out and, you know, of course we're using the BF. These are big fish and, um, you know, we play around and the next thing you know, we're like, let's take the SF out. Let's give it a run. And then on the second day we got a good size fish in and then we start throwing the SF and, probably like a hundred pound fish just eats and you know no problem at all it's a couple you know like 10 minutes maybe <laughs> we're holding the fish at the boat so we looked at the reel and we're like okay the bonefish reel works <laughs> <laughs> so how much how much smaller is uh is the uh then your the sf than this baby okay so the difference in the mf and the sf is just actually the diameter we, we actually at the beginning we made it smaller and then we went out and tested it and everybody was like, can we keep it the same size as the MF? So four inches. But what we did was we narrowed it up. So right here is one of them. So if you look at there, it's much, it's about for about 10 millimeters narrower than the um, 
in the uh, MF. So in a lot lighter. So about two and a half ounces lighter than the MF. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, that was the big thing. Everybody, you know, the ten, the MF being in that nine, 10, 11 class, uh, it's good, but the rods are just getting lighter and lighter. Um, and you got to have it balanced and feel it, feel really good for like a six, seven, eight weight. Right. Uh, what kind of rods are you using? Uh, down there I was using TNTs. So, um, super nice rod. I don't think they're like, they're like Bentleys, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I got a chance to use them and, uh, uh, Joel's stuff is great stuff. And, you know, he's got like side angler lines. He's got every bit of prototype and stuff. So whenever you fish with him, I kind of had to make a joke about take on Instagram today. Cause I'm like taking a picture of his fly and I'm like, this is a cool little fly. It's like the squirrel from um, over the hedge. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what it looked like. And the thing was just getting pounded all day. And I take a picture of it. And he's like, don't do that. So then I told him, oh, I'm going to post it on Instagram, let the whole world see it. So <laughs> <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing surprises me with you, Wes. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, we had some fun, but yeah, we, we were fortunate. We had great weather down there and, um, you know, we usually, you know, and I know that you make these trips and you never get the right weather. You, you, you know, get lucky. Oh yeah. Time. My, my buddy, um, Ulf in uh, Sweden, I uh, went over, oh, he's on a trip right now, a month long trip. And they've had so few days that they could actually fish. They're out there for big bluefin tuna. And they have been totally blown out on weather. I mean, the days they've gotten out, they've got some really, really nice fish. But, you know, just weather, man, weather. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's a curse. And when you're fly fishing, even worse. Yeah. At least for me, I, I can't throw a fly in the wind to save my life. Don't worry. If you had this, somebody like Joel tends to, I'm not used to always having to set up with the perfect forehand cast. So I'll, I'll make a backhand cast. Joel's like, wait, wait, wait. And, it's like a funny thing because I'm never used to having the guy that like get you a perfect shot. So it was, it was, it made life really easy. He how would somebody, how would somebody his, find him? Uh, on the internet, um, look him up, Captain Joel Dickey. Um, yeah. uh, he stays down in Big Pine Key down there and he's, he's a resident of Georgia in the wintertime. So just good guy, you know, other than you can barely understand him when he talks because he has that Georgia marbles in his mouth. <laughs> I love him to death. Love, you know, and I'm like, what did you just say? You know, so <laughs> but we got some people here. I just want to say hello. Uh, John, how you doing, man? David, uh, need more beer. Well, I've always got beer and, and I can drink beer now. The last couple of shows I couldn't. Ah, Wes doesn't like beer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jeremiah, how you doing, man? Uh, Eric just checking in. Mike from San Antonio, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, Reginald, uh, thanks for joining us as always. And we got Diana from Austin, Texas is with us. Andrew is with us as always. How you doing, man? Um, Uh-oh. Got our first actual question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wes, any chance of getting a timeline on the SGN and LGN stars? Left-handed. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't say left-handed, does it? No. <laughs> Good. No. So uh, what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to have it at ICAST. Um, everybody knows about our big move. Um, it definitely took a lot out of us in trying to get this place set up and set it up right. So we got some new machines online. And I wanted to make sure that when we came out with, I mean, especially like the new Star and the new SF, that it's just right, right out the gates. So um, I think we're looking at probably – August, it'll be available for retail, um, but we'll have it at ICAST, a little star, and that'll be the SG Narrow Star. Um, so it should shortly come the next sizes too. Um, we did make something recently, and a lot of people have asked about is so we have our SG crank arm, and if we could see it there, I can't, yeah, I'm not yeah it's right in the middle, right there. Yeah, yeah, so that's that. Well, you know, we're at Fred Hall all the time and we see these people and everybody tells us, hey, can you make a long version? So let's see how much longer it is. Can you, let's see if I can hold it right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go, right there. There you go. So this is the, the one on the, yeah, it's my left. That's the, this is the new one. It's a long version. Uh, we're kind of calling it West Coast style or Malaysian style because that's who wants it. 
So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, just, it's about the length of the LG. Um, so it should be pretty cool little piece to it. And it'll complement that SG star really nice. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you know, actually you brought it up, but uh, many people don't know. You did make a move, a, a pretty, a pretty big move with the factory. Um, Cause I mean, when I visited last time is a very small shop in a very small town. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we were in a little teeny town. I mean, people always ask like, how far were you from anything? And we were like, you know, go to the grocery store. It's 25 miles. You know, you go to here, it's like 20 miles. Um, you know, also the workforce, you know, it's harder there. It's a kind of a retirement community. It's great. It's beautiful. It's got fisheries, incredible. The outdoors is incredible for hunting and fishing. Um, but when you're trying to grow a business, it's, it's constrained. Um, we moved down to Virginia beach and we're just South of ocean and Naval air station. Um, and we're right in the middle of everything. Um, we built the factory down here. It's new machines, a lot of learning curves. We, you know, we lost some real valuable key members of our team um, in the move. They're just hard for families to move, but we also gained some really good people as well. But yeah, it's exciting, but it's also tiring. Yeah, so it's a it's a lot bigger space. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw, you, and you have our friend uh, Corey's now working for you, Corey Ruth. Yeah, so I uh, brought him in. Um, and so we, we probably, for Virginia Beach people, we've gained uh, four people. So it's been good on that side. So um, we just, it's easier to get people. And then it's easy to get, you know, a lot, a lot of people in the community that support us, you know, they can see the product, they can come to see the factory. I've had a lot of people fly into town for business and then they're like, hey, I'm in Virginia Beach, can I come by the factory? You know, or they're in Norfolk or something, and and it's been nice just to let people see what we do, and then they realize really we make almost all the parts. <laughs> you know, it's right. that's kind of the, always the kicker. Everybody goes, "Oh, yeah, I didn't realize you made them all the parts." <laughs> so, but everything but the bearings, right? We got good news today, right? That you will not have a price increase on this, <laughs> right? Because of tariffs. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess we'll find out who's really made in America and who's not if their prices increase. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, think I, I wanted to make a joke and be like, oh, let's decrease prices now just to really put the pinch on people, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everything is always, like I said, everything's made in America other than the bearings, right? That's right. That's right. All made in your own factory. Yep. Some days it's good. Some days you're like, man, really? We have to make that bushing or do we have to make that little piece? But uh, it's, it gives us ultimate control. And also when customers have issues or we need to make modifications to improve the performance, you know, we're not stuck on a lot of stuff. We can just go in the back and test out a couple pieces, send them with you or whoever and just say, hey, check this out, see how it works. Right. And I mean, I talked to uh, like Luther Cyphers the other day, um, you know, the fact that they do so much of their own tooling, um, you know, it like you, it, it allows you to be much more nimble and um, react to the market, react to issues. That's right. I mean, I, I'm looking at all these other brands and people that I know in the industry and man, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard when, when you have something, you have to put a man in a factory somewhere else. You're hoping the quality's there. Um, but then, you know, you can make short batch run stuff. So if we want to make this long crank arm, it's not much. It's just basically, hey, one of us is going to work over the weekend and we make a new part and throw it in the reel. And um, <clears throat> so that's how we make a difference. Yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, like, I, I, you know, I'm friends with Patrick Sabil. Um, he gets his lures made overseas. And he is constantly having to fly over there because he right. can't rely on the system to, unless he's there, to make sure everything is done the way he wants it done. So, you know, right. having been right in front of you in your own shop has got to make a huge difference. Right. You can go punish the people that just messed something up. Or... <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't do that, like shoot them with a blow dart or anything. No, like never, that. never. <laughs> <laughs> hey david hansen says wes your reels are badass thank you uh brett this feels overdue glad to see ya um serge is always joining us from ottawa thanks for joining us serge uh, is anybody watching this on i haven't seen any comments but uh i was wondering if anybody's watching it over on youtube because uh, sometimes we get the comments from over there sometimes we don't hey dave how you doing man um 
Mike asks, when is a Siegler five weight trout reel coming? <laughs> no, that's coming. Uh, I think that's all we talked about on the flat trip. We're catching tarpon and then we're talking about the next thing. It's just, uh, oh, do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that. So, yeah, there's going to be a trout one. Um, it's going to be a TF. <clears throat> I think like, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they just keep going on and on, right? Um, yeah, so we're looking at, um, uh, she's 3.75. I've made the main case. She's the same width as the um, new SF. So it's narrow, um, and our goal was to make it extremely light. So we've got a couple pieces we've made for it. Um, that's one of those ones, Joel, when he goes home in the winter, uh, he always wants. And, and he came up here and visited me this winter, and he took me to an Aaron Lewis concert, one of his uh, clients, and uh, I got to listen, watch that guy play. And uh, he was like, oh, and by the way, you're going to make me a trout fly. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... No, it's in the works. Um, so we got a couple things coming. I mean, it's going to be a smaller, you know, of course, the SF is really close right now to being released. And then we have, uh, then it's going to be a, a time is we go TF and then I've got a fun little reel called a XBF for somebody down in uh, Guatemala. Um, and it's really big. Is so that extra big. It's, it's, it's big. So what's, that? what's that for somebody you use chart targeting billfish yeah. making sharks absolutely it's uh, it's really just designed for pill fishery like just getting line pickup um really really smooth drag you can predict you can set you know your max drags and you know the same way you bill fish regularly with conventional but um the line pickup's critical um and it's for chris sheeter down there and kind of you know morphs from some of his wants and needs um, we've played with six and a quarter, <laughs> so that's pretty big, that's big. <laughs> about like that big. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a teaser reel. So like it could be used as a teaser reel if it doesn't work out, but, uh, <laughs> no, that is a kind of a fun project. And then I've got something I think I've got to do now for the, the silver, big silver things where, you know, you just fish for them enough. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, I got to make something for these fish. So uh fly sides definitely um it's been good it's like the, the customers understand um what we built um it's different i still haven't figured out how to to you know teach them about the drag and the lever fully i mean it's like so many people get one and use it and go oh my gosh i get it now after like two days of fishing with it i'm like oh us, you know, coming from conventional, we're all used to it so yeah right it, you know the preset is 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 such a big part of the game. I mean, controlling where your max drag is, if you didn't know it, then, you know. Right. And yeah. this whole, the, I mean, these, these fly reels, this whole thing came about because of your fishing experiences yeah. and going to the Seychelles for GTs, right? Yep. That's exactly right. It's, uh, you know, I went there, had problems with reels. I really wasn't even wanting to get into fly reels. I mean, I had enough going on. Um, I really wasn't a true fly kind of guy. Like, it, that wasn't my thing. I mean, I just fish a lot. And then I went there and it was such a challenge to get the fish on fly. And then to like, it's all a presentation. And it was like, it's technical. And then these fish ate, like they ate, like, like you want, you know, what you dream of. So if, if you want to see that, I mean, I, you, you probably, I'm sure, you know, um, what, I know there's some really, really cool videos the guys yeah. put out of those GTs hitting the fly. Do you, do you happen to know the name of that off the top of your head? Yeah. Like um, I know Keith Rose um, with Alphonse fishing group and those guys and Yaka Lucas and all that crowd. They have definitely done a great, you know, documentation of it. I mean, they are the ones that, you know, no matter what anybody says, they really put it out there with like seven degrees South, um, you know, in the Cosma. And then it's like about Cosma, some things about Alphonse get out there and look it up. I mean, it's on, a lot of it's on YouTube. It's on Vimeo. It's on a lot of the yeah, different I know you shared it with me a long time ago. And, and some of that stuff was just yeah. insane. Yeah. It's no longer wearing khaki pants and it's like board shorts and running with your rod, throwing big flies. It's, it's, it's a different sport now. Um, it's not so stuffy and, and, you know, it's, it's great. It's, 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 it's actually like an, it's an exercise. I mean, you wade the flats, you're always walking at rough terrain, but uh, yeah, that's what got me hooked to it, you know, and, and then having big drag and, 
and but not just big drag but having you can just control your drag so you don't have to slam it to them but if you want to you can <laughs> yeah and, and you're not palming it and so you always know where you are exactly and which fly fishing have been have never had in the past um Brett has a question here. Uh, I'll take this one. American River Salmon Run is shaping up under the bridge. Any kayak anglers that have rig advice for me, uh, boat recommendation. Well, if it if it's a flowing river, um, you know, that, that actually has some, uh, you know, class one type of rapids on it. Uh, I mean, Jackson Kayak has the Kusa. I mean, that thing was built for running rivers. It's a, a river fishing boat. If, if it's a little bit calmer than pretty much any of the boats, the, the Kusa HD is a super comfortable, very standable platform. Um, it would work really well for you and quite maneuverable. Uh, there's the Mayfly would actually work quite well or the Liska. If you're a fly fisherman, the Mayfly, because that boat was purpose built for fly fishermen. They've remo removed anything on that boat that's going to snag your line. So as fly fishermen know, your line gets snagged on everything <laughs> and always at the most inopportune time. So check out some of the boats from Jackson kayak. They have quite a few. And if you don't find one from them, somebody else is going to have one because there are so many new uh, kayaks out there and they, they have a kayak for everybody. You always have to make sure you match it to your size, you know, uh, how heavy you are, how tall you are, uh, what kind of water you're going to fish and, and just kind of weigh all the factors and make sure you get in the right boat for you. Uh, Don McAd Mc McMahon, do you guys know Robert Field? Yes. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where else to go with that. Hey, Jonathan from Ireland. Awesome, man. I, I, have you ever been to Ireland, Wes? I mean, you I, went I, all I, over Europe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I landed, landed there one time. Over, but... I landed there because I missed a flight somewhere, and then I landed. But we never really spent much time in Ireland. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. Um, I would love cold. it sometime. Wet, cold. Wet, cold, yeah. I know you don't like that. Uh, Mike McKenna says he played a bit with the MF at the Bio Anglers in Houston, and it's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. They're, they're, they're very, very cool. Uh, Dave from Ottawa joining us as always. How are you? Uh, Jason from Ohio going kayak fishing tomorrow. I'm going kayak fishing on Tuesday. And then, I'll, like I said, I'll be in Florida. I'm leaving Monday night, and I'll be uh, in Florida for a week fishing with a bunch of the guys. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Jeremy, I second the desire to have a five to six weight reel for some trout. Love my SGN. It's my go-to reel for my local lingcod and rockfish. The SGN has become my go-to reel. I mean, it, it really is. I, I mean, that, and, and it'll tackle anything. I mean, what a little powerhouse. I think that's where, you know, I, the only thing that's going to replace it for you is the star SG and era. Yeah. I, so I guess because I know how you hold your reel. It's like you like your hand over it like a little bait caster. And when I made that side salt smaller, it's like that's that's exactly what I see. And it's it's I think the star is really a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Um, that's why I kind of really want to take it time, take the time with it to make it just just right, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I know you were really close with it. And then mm -hmm. uh, this this whole moving factories and <laughs> everything else uh, kind of <laughs> threw a wrench in, in, in getting things done. But that's it. I mean, that's it. And we and so once we got everything set, um, then we had to catch up with what are we our regular reels, all the lever drags that we were out there, you know, and and. Once that got settled, you know, we just opened up a new distribution for our conventional reels that's going through Big Rock Sports, which has been great um, having their support with their team. Does that um, mean I should be seeing more stuff out here on the West Coast? Yeah, I, it, we've been it's like a cycle. We're getting it all tuned and primed. Um, you know, they've got a warehouse out there in Vegas that gets all the products so that it cuts down on shipping um, and availability timelines. So it, it's been um, it's been a big undertaking, and and they're a big team, and I've been happy working with all the guys there. I learn a lot from them. Um, you know, it's just working on the scale of it, making sure that we're exposed to the right dealers and the right shops. You know, it's not it's still uh, uh, so, you know if you have a big rock account, you're not going to automatically become a dealer. You, you still have to be chosen a little bit to make it right fit. Um, right. But well, it's been good. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff out here. 
Um, does that mean um, the reels are, are, are the reels still available directly through you? No, right now uh, for distribute, it, it just made sense um, with growing the business and it's been growing it the way it has. I just wanted to focus on new designs, you know, and making better products. So uh, the conventional world all's in under, under the roof of big rock sports. So they distribute all the products. Um, and then the fly reels under me, um, I distribute the fly reels and so that's kind of, they, they were like, keep that to you. We don't, that's not our, their our wheelhouse, but it's, uh, it's actually nice because you know, the fly is so new and we're, we're meeting so many, it's a, it's a different clientele too. You still doing that deal on the fly reels, the, the fish on the box and all that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. For sure. I can, yeah, see, so, I can see one over your shoulder, the box okay. with a, with a GT on it. That's the old one. Yeah. So let me see here. Like, yeah. So the new SF I'm looking up cause I always laugh cause we were like making all the names and things different, but so the BF, of course, everybody knows about the sailfish and tarpon tuna and, a, um, GT you catch all four, you get a reel for free. All you gotta do is catch it with a reel, take a picture and send it. If it's, if you catch it with a God's reel, you buy a reel later, you can still use that as credit. Uh, I'm, I'm not picky. You just want people fishing. Let's reward the people that are smashing cool fish. Uh, the MF is the Albi, uh, which, yeah, you can get those around our way. You got rooster fish. So it's the punk rocker from the West Coast. <laughs> it's like got a mohawk. I mean, that's the first thing I think. I'm like, you know, we got to, you know, it's totally West Coast thing. Um, and then permit and striper. So those are the MFs. Um, you know, the permits definitely your your tricky little fish. Um, stripers you can catch uh, pretty much everywhere. Albies are pretty easy. Roosters are your you gotta be able to throw in the wind, and you gotta be able to strip fast. And that's gonna be the tricky. You know, just so, uh, so pretty much every one of them is gonna have at least one as a destination fish that you're gonna have to that's try right. to get to. I mean, that's unless right. You, unless you live someplace that has these fish. That's right. Then the SF, like that was a hard one. Like I sat around and thought about it for a while and I kept thinking like, what's a challenge in fish? It's, it's fun to fish for. And for us, it, you know, everybody, it was built for bonefish. Um, the next one was drum for us. The, the red drum is probably one of the most popular sight casting fisheries there is um, I, I, on, on our coast. It's anybody can get out there and do it. Um, you, you can be on the banks to wade and to skiff any, you know, it's a great fish. He likes to eat. Um, trigger fish, uh, that's your destination. So, but yet you have them off the coast of Virginia, you have them around. Um, and then the tricky skill fish that's been my personal, like fun to try to catch a lot is a sheep's head on fly. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, they're around. Um, I definitely have to get with you to work with the uh, West Coast fish, fish because I don't, I don't know. Do y'all have trigger fish out there? Not really. Oh, well, I mean, we do, but not not to any any real numbers. Uh, you know, maybe calico bass. Yeah, we could figure uh, out. Maybe we could have a sub. We could have like, all right, if I get a, a, a swap out a a drum for a for a calico bass, maybe calico we'll, bass, we'll, or we'll, white sea bass, or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll trade. So those <laughs> are the, those are the fish. So if in, in any of the class of the reel, if you catch those, then you get one for free. So. I just want to try to make a challenge. You know, I've had uh, three people that, you know, that have gotten it. Uh, oh, really? That's yeah, awesome. Two of them are not allowed to do play because they're pros. Oh. They work with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can't do it. And I can't win one. But the big, you know, the funniest thing is like we've had one customer that's done it. Um, we've had, we have a lot of customers that are close, like real close. So it's exciting because it keeps us in touch with them, you know. Um, even uh, it, it. It's such a cool thing. It, it's such a cool thing it, it's, it, that you've done there. I, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people like competition and all that. And this is just basically competing with yourself and giving yourself a challenge. So that I think it's really awesome. Uh, let's get another question here. Um, greetings from the Midwest. When will the smaller fly reel be? back in stock or I guess. Yeah. 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 So everybody sees like our website says it's sold out. It's um, our web designer, web maker is just out to lunch. But, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I pressed the wrong button and it says sold out. And everybody's like, when's it going to be in stock? And I'm like, it never was in stock. So <laughs> it's still in some carts in the back. So no, uh, it's good. It, uh, we're looking, I'm looking today. I uh, probably like, 
first of June. Um, it's close. So I just, the, I did the last little bit of tweaks to this week and we didn't need to make any tweaks. So that's good news. But now it's uh, deburring and getting it ready to send off to anodize and then it's uh, build the reels and get them out. So the first batch, I made a hundred of them. So there's, you know, it'd be nice to, I know a lot of them, I've got about 40 or 50 pre-orders already. So that's a nice thing. Uh, Andrew had a question for you. Have you ever tried making an all titanium fly reel? Ah, uh, yeah. Why does he have to ask that, right? No, I mean, titanium is a uh, interesting property, I guess. Everybody, I mean, like pliers, like Van Stahl's pliers are insanely, that's like the flagship of pliers. And, you know, um, they were ta titanium. I've had different experiences from my background that I don't think it's, I don't know if it's all that. I mean, not for a fly reel. I know that, um, I guess Jack Charlton made a tie one. But salt, salt and tie and shafts together, some things act funny. Um, like my body would sweat on my seat post. My seat post would go into my frame, and then that would never come apart. And then you go to the airport with your bike box with your seat post out of your bike <laughs> case, and you're like, what happened? Well, four days of, or a week of racing somewhere, and it seized it, you know? So um, is it hard to machine? It's just different. It's harder, but... Um, it's not lighter. So sometimes, you know, some people think it's just lighter. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the, the aluminum, I don't like it. Um, I think the, probably the next push is probably some colors. Um, do some fun stuff with colors and stuff. Well, so. talk about colors. Um, just cause you know, you do see some of the reels out there. Manufacturers have a lot of different colors and I know you had more colors and then backed off on some colors, try to kind of streamline everything. But you're doing some cool stuff as far as custom work. Yeah, yeah. So, like, well, I don't ever mind. Somebody calls and they need their name put places or they want something on the side of their reel because they're a business. Um, it's never, you know, we can do that. We have the capabilities. It, I actually, that's part of it that I really like doing. Um, so, if somebody needs their name on it, you know, just have them reach out to it. You know, you just reach out directly. Uh, retailers know that they can reach out to us, too. Um, I think recently we did one for Smith and Wesson, um, which is pretty cool, uh, on an OS. We did a set of OSs that way. We've done things from like, you know, stuff for hook and gaff. We're playing around with some stuff on their watches. Um, and then, you know, putting people's names on their reels, like on fly reels, sometimes in the, uh, the hub, it's fun to do stuff. Um, right. say, I, I've seen some stuff you did, uh, like for some tournaments. Yep. Uh, where you put the name of the tournament or, or whatever on the side, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, the capabilities now with the fiber laser really help. Um, it's really precise and you can make a really good mark and you can actually chisel it away with it. Um, so it's, 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 that sounds fun because each one of those reels means something and there's somebody, you know, is getting them. And I mean, every reel is that way, but it's a little different, you know, yeah, yeah, but it's still, I, like I said, for, for special events and that sort of thing, that's that's a really pretty cool thing. Um, let's go ahead and set some other questions here. Uh, here we go. This is a good question from Martin. Any chance of a new T-style handle? I have a release reel with one, but would love them on my SGN. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so the ugly handle that everybody in the very beginning, you know, we made that crazy handle. Uh, they kind of like, I just said, Hey, you know what? I'm not going to make them. Cause I had some people that you either loved them or hated them. Like just either loved or hate. And then I was like, all right, no more. I'm sick and tired of it. And then, um, all these scrap, like extra ones I got on my friend's boats. And what happened was the fish Mavericks were fishing with one of my friends <clears throat> out of on the Chesapeake Bay and all his reels had the old power handle, those ugly things. And those guys were like, dude, we got to have these handles. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so we dug up enough to get them a couple more. And then all of a sudden it started again. So we actually changed their mold, uh, not actually the handle, but the insert. So it's stronger with their new handle assembly that doesn't bind up anymore. So yes, they'll be back. Um, I'm trying to think. I know we have the injection mold part. Yeah, we're looking a couple, probably three to six weeks, somewhere around there. That's, that's one piece that they, somebody makes the mold in Florida and they inject the plastic and it's the same thing as a skateboard wheel. And then they send them to us. So we make the spindle and send those to them and then they inject them on, over top of them and then they send them back. Very cool. 
Um, Brian says, good afternoon from, I'm assuming that's Southwest Florida. <laughs> How you doing, Brian? Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, Don, thanks for sharing it. We said we want as many shares as possible. It always uh, helps us and helps the, the guys like Wes getting the word out about their stuff. Um, Jeremy, is the handle going to be a little looser than the SGN handle? Not the arm, the handle. It tends to be turning a little tight. Yeah, yeah. So depending on what generation you have, like we went through some things where we said, you know, I don't want to handle, one of my pet peeves is I never want to handle to come off while fishing. Um, I had it happen too many times where you're cranking, all of a sudden you're like, okay, my right hand, and you're like, uh-oh. And then it's a stubby screwdriver in the boat. You're trying to figure it out. So my basis is I would rather in the very beginning never come off. But when you do that, you put bronze bushings and then bronze and stainless get a little bit bound up over time. So I went to this new material called Igus and I've been using that as a bushing. So yes, they are definitely, uh, they definitely spin better. And the most recent thing we've done is instead of having that stainless shoulder bolt, we make the bolts on that. I made an aluminum one and the aluminum actually runs faster and nicer on the Igus than the stainless. And we haven't seen anywhere, um, you know, we used to get the handles back a lot, um, quite a bit. I mean, you'd probably like 5%, you know, or people like, can you loosen it? And we'd tweak them. Um, but now you're looking at, you know, out of five or 6,000 reels, you might see maybe 10. Um, so it's been a big that's improvement. Cool. Yeah, that, that's all, that's always been an issue. I mean, I know at the very beginning, they would, like you said, they would bind up on it a little bit better. And they have gotten better and better. It's good to hear you you keep progressing on that. Uh, it's always it's always nice. Um, Ruben says, have an SG and SGN great power to weight ratio. Does Siegler have plans on making a multi-speed reel on the larger models? Yeah, there, there's something coming. <clears throat> uh, Jim knows a little bit about, like, he's been around it enough that he knows the, the secret of what we're coming with. But really the first thing we had to do was move. Um, there's going to be something that I really think will eliminate the two-speed reel altogether. Uh, that we've developed uh, it, it lighter. It, Can you tell me, and I know you don't, you don't want to get into it, but uh, I mean, I, I, I really haven't talked to you about this since last iCast. Yep. Um, have you made progress on it? I mean, have uh, you been playing with it more? Yeah. So there's a couple pieces of it that were solved. Um, and that was more of just uh, where do I find this material? How do I get that material working with this material? who can make this material for me. And once we did it, <clears throat> you know, we know we've got that. Now it's a matter of just machine time. Let's get, you know, I kind of came over from my cast, knew we got to move, <clears throat> thought we were going to move a little quicker. It took a little more time. Um, I think once we get, we have these couple new big machines that are really produ production minded that I'm going to get there. And I've, I've had my own lathes kind of set aside just for prototyping and making one off stuff. And I'm own mills for that now. So I won't stop production to make something. So yeah, it's going to be the same size as a 50 wide <clears throat> capacity of about an international 70. Um, it's going to have plenty of power. I can tell you that. Like it's got, I mean, not just power, meaning, Hey, I can stop a train um, to hit triple digits. I don't think there's a problem uh, from what I've seen. If somebody wants to play the rod and the rod holder game, um, or the power really what i'm talking about is your cranking ability because that's the problem you know we it hasn't really changed i mean two speed reels have been the exact same mechanisms for since two speed reels came out um you right. right so and then i still don't understand why somebody wants two speed when it makes you know 15 pounds of drag or 12 pounds of drag it doesn't i mean to me it's like you don't need two speeds in um, right. No. You know, we've, but, we've, we've definitely had that conversation enough times. Like, well, why does somebody need a, a two-speed reel when their reel can't even make enough drag? I mean, or or like, hey, I go. I've heard this a lot recently. It's like I'm a yellowtail fisherman. I gotta have two speeds. And I'm like, all right, got it. All right. What? Then I, I mean, I'm gonna give a plug for another company that makes a great reel, uh, but your Trini doesn't have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they love to throw a Trini doing the exact same thing. So any star drags, I mean, when is star drags going to make two speeds? Right. Same question, same day. You know, so to me, you, if you have the right gear and the right crank arm length and you've got the right, uh, you know, it's just like having a boat and you have the right propeller on the right motor power to the right hull, you get, you know, you put one wrong. 
and the thing won't even get out of the water. You can have 200 horsepower, 500 horsepower, and the thing won't even move, right? So it's a part of the game. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. It's going to, it should be pretty exciting. I know I'm excited to get back into that mode of where I'm making new stuff always. And um, we had a little bit of, like I said, the move took a lot of energy. Um, but well, if you, if you could get this guy working a little bit faster, a little bit harder. Um, <laughs> hey, Corey, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> your, new, your newest employee, you get that guy, uh, you know, get the old cattle prod and get him working a little faster or get him to get the other guys working faster. Well, that's what he's brought on for. He's definitely has the skills on uh, managing people and managing projects. Um, he comes from the background of, you know, the water quality. Um, it's all documentation. So that hopefully eliminates a lot. Of, we won't have as many snowflake reels, then have a little more, you know, you know, production will be a much higher quality. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, Dave says he's shared it. Thank you, Dave. My good friend, Ulf, Ulfi Johansson from Sweden. How are you, Ulf? I hope uh, your final days over there are uh, getting you those bluefin in the water. The weather's laid down for you. <laughs> Uh, well, we do have a comment from YouTube. So there we go. Arturo, excellent reels. Thank you. Um, will you guys ever get into doing CNC jigs, lures, irons? Uh, I'm making sure nothing's behind me. Uh, is there anything behind me? No, nothing I can see right there. But yeah, I think that definitely we can always do stuff like that. That's the stuff that's fun. Like lure heads. Um, uh, shoot. Push pole holders. <laughs> Somebody that was a Captain Joel Dickey need. He needed these. Was broke on his boat, and next thing you know, I had to make these. Um, yeah, so lure like jigs. Um, yeah, we could. I know I've made a sinker two jig for people, um, and lure heads definitely could be an option if somebody needs them. Well, that's the thing is you are a machine shop, and if somebody has something they need done, you can do that as well. Side jobs keeps keeps right. the, the machines running. That's right. Uh, EJ Rivera from Puerto Rico. How you doing, man? Let's see. Eric, Jim, I love your show. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. I'm just learning about Siegler Reels. Please explain the unique features of your fly reels and the advantage of your reels have over the competition. Lever drags, blah, da, da, da. Uh, all of your reels look revolutionary as if you started your designs from scratch, which you did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know, I, I know what I can tell you, uh, and Wes can obviously expand on this. Uh, for me, the biggest thing about these reels is the simplicity, uh, the ease of maintenance. Um, it, as a kayak angler uh, who is hard on his gear, the ability to tear these things apart with just one Allen key, basically, um, and clean them out, lube them up. You don't have parts go flying all over. That, for me, is the is what makes them so unique. No, I think you're right. I mean, it, the reason why we have a relationship was, I'll think in the very beginning days, like I started thinking, Hey, these big boats are great to have people testing. And then all of a sudden you, you and I got together and, and, and you realize, you know what? A kayaker is in the water. He's under his gears, half underwater, half the time. It's the best place in the world to test out. Then if you're going traveling all over the world, like you do, you get there, there's nothing worse than you thought it was good and you can't, it, something could go wrong. Well, you know, like I said, one Allen key or, or like the flies, like a hook, you can take the whole thing apart. Um, yeah, I, I definitely study other reels, but I always tend to go back to way back in time reels um, to look at stuff, uh, to see what other things in other industries are doing. Um, but yet use the most latest, latest and greatest like, like materials that you can find. So, uh, yeah, it's like I said, I mean, they're, they're tough, they're simple. Um, I, I had this conversation with, again, with Luther Cyphers the other day and sometimes making things simple is much <laughs> difficult. That's right. You know, it, but in the long run, you have a better product. And like I said, there's nothing worse. And if, if people remember the day of taking a pair apart, an old pen 500 and you open up the side case and the springs would go flying across the room. Um, and, and, you know, and a lot of real, or you get, you know, even a, a Shimano or Daiwa, I've got, you know, there's, there's just certain reels I'm afraid to take apart because there are so many parts and pieces in there where you just don't have that with these reels. 
Yeah, I put. I mean, you think about one reel that's like a anchor to fishing, and you think about like a senator. It stills out on the water. Um, it's not many parts, and now the it's not as performance just because of the time of its era. You know, it's just it doesn't have big gears. It doesn't have big drag washers, but yet it still works and it can be pounded on worked on. I mean, I kind of, I looked at like my new fly reel, my SF and Joel looked at it and he's like, Oh man, you got it so light. I mean, I got the spool just machined where it's, it's hard to machine it. So, so skinny and so light, but yet I will not take away from the edge rim edge of a fly reel. So if you slip and bang it on the ground or the frame, places that it could stop you from fishing. I don't want you to go all the way halfway around the world and slip and then you can't use the reel that you put your money in. So, you know, yeah, making it simpler is a pain in the tail. You know, I look at something and I'm like, I just made it more complicated. You gotta go the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Arturo over uh, on the YouTube side, any Siegler spin cast <laughs> reels on the works? These well, questions come up every time, so we always yeah. have to come at you. No, 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 it's great because, like, it reminds me that, you know, that's the mass. That's the mass piece here. So for me to get, you know, I've got one more um, probably big, you know, the big reel coming out for the offshore with that 50 wide, and I think that that'll pretty much take care of the lever drag side. Then the star drags will follow shortly. Um, they're not create. I mean, it's, they're all designed out. We just have to get them in the machine schedule, um, and do some final stuff like, you know, have you fish them all the time and a couple other people, but like, you know how it is, you just get out there and we know that things work. We know right. what works and doesn't, um, spinning reel. <clears throat> yeah. I've got a basis of where my design's going. I've drawn a lot of things on it. Um, it's there. I just, I kind of am a type of person that just, it takes about, I mean, takes about two months for it to happen and when it's getting ready to go it's something weird at this shop and russell knows it old justin that was here knew it like when it was time like it all of a sudden i just kind of get in my room and we start making parts and next thing you know it was late nights late late nights and hurting mornings and, and next thing you know like within a month you have something like you really have something that's all right here it's going down so i it's there. We, we know what we're going to make. Um, there's going to be three sizes. Um, it's going to be, I, it's going to be an American reel, <clears throat> but it's going to have some things that like Japanese reels do better than American reels. So, but I'm going small first and then going big last. So I want to have something for speckled trout or even bass fishing. Um, mm -hmm. something that's like, like that 2,500 to 3,000, depending on your brand, like, you, you know, right. Right. Um, and then we're going to go to one that's like a 4,000, 5,000 for me. It's like in my mindset is like a cobia reel or something where you got something that's going to pull pretty good. And then the last thing I'm going to worry about is going to the bigger, um, because, you know, throwing poppers on some big fish is fun, but, but man, the, the, it's really at the 2,500 to 3,000 where you just want to throw a top water plug or soft plastics or whatever. So right. and I know you really want a bait caster. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to be a baitcaster. <laughs> a little nice low pro. Uh, I yeah, I throw for I throw those a lot for you know your calico bass fishing or uh, spotted bay bass or or even some of the bigger low pros for uh, throwing light iron and stuff are, are really fun to fish. Um, Michael Guerrero says, uh, "What's a setup for calicos? Your recommendation?" Um, I'd say for, for like fly lining live bait, um, uh, the, uh, the SGN, I mean, is, is just such an awesome, awesome reel. And, but the thing is, the nice thing is, is if you, you can get, you know, wear out the calicos on that, but if you, uh, have a yellowtail or a big white sea bass come through the kelp and hit it, you still know you have the power in that reel to still land a yellowtail or big white sea bass. So, um, that, that's, that's what I would look at. Um, GT or rooster fishing, what's better? Never been rooster fishing. That's the only one. And I've never caught a GT. Mm. <laughs> I've got a lot of roosters. I've never caught a GT. Yeah. Uh, from what I've seen, those GTs are pretty ridiculously powerful. So, yeah. And I've heard that the roosters are tricky. And I heard, like, like I know Brian and Sarah that work with us. Um, 
they just got back from Mexico. They had a great trip. Um, you know, that's a, I don't know if it's much of a land base. So if you like land based fishing, I think the Jeets are there. And then if you're boat fishing, you know, then you're going to go the other way, probably to the roosters, but they're both have the same attitude. <clears throat> so you, you, they like eating. Um, you've got to strip fast. Um, so yeah, for me, I have to say GTs. That's what made me do all this, but, but well, um, the GTs, I mean, they do the GTs get bigger. I mean, a big rooster, a rooster will get a hundred pounds. That's big. But, but uh, I know, um, there's a lot more bigger GTs. I think, yeah, I, th I think we just got to go to Mexico and try to catch it. <laughs> Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica. You tell me where any one of those, uh, I am down. Um, <laughs> Zachariah Scott Cope is going to teach me to fly fish. Get some good instruction, <laughs> you know, because it makes a big difference. Learning how to fly cast and then you just get out there and practice. Um, I said, I I'm an excellent fly caster until I have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something like it's like you're ready. You got the flying hand, your rod, your lines out. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, there they are. And then you look down and everything decided just to jump on your line and you're like, what's going on? It's all twisted. So yeah. Yeah. It, you catch in the back of your ear, you get that gust of wind and uh, on the uh, kayaks, you know, I, we were, uh, I think when I was in Belize, you know, you finally see that school of bonefish come by and that's when I make the cast that wraps around my power pole. You know, it's like, <laughs> 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 I, I, I definitely have a love hate thing for fly fishing. I mean, I really enjoyed it when you hook a fish, it's like nothing else, but man, it, it frustrates me like no other. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm with you. Like, I think the best thing is, is if you in the perfect world is just waiting. I love waiting. Something about waiting on the flats and you just see fish where you got good hard bottom. It, it you don't have all the stuff around you. Your line management might be in the surf, but like it's the best used for me. Right. Well, I got my first uh, bonefish on the fly uh, in the Bahamas. Sight cast a bonefish. That was pretty cool. And that was that was wading through there. That was really really fun. Um, Don has a thing for Robert Field. <laughs> I follow Robert Field on YouTube. They just got done in New Zealand. Have you ever fished? New Zealand, I, I assume. Uh, yeah, I've been to New Zealand three times um, shooting my shows. And uh, I, I love New Zealand. It's it's a beautiful country, really nice people. And yellowtail fishing or kingfish, if you will, like no other place. I mean, those fish over there are big and strong and absolutely amazing. Uh, Wes, you know Ricky. Ricky uh, is asking about the spinning reels, and uh, we we did uh, talk about that just a few minutes ago. But I figured we'd throw Ricky up there because he's a friend of ours. Yep. Hey, Ricky. Um, Martin says, "Would a line stripping basket work for fly fishing from a kayak?" Yeah, some guys do use a, a stripping basket. Uh, ben from Australia, how you doing, Ben? Um, it's got to be getting to be winter there now. <laughs> Everything, everything's backwards. Um, uh, Michael, uh, I want to play with a reel. <laughs> Which one should I use at Crowley Lake? I probably a low pro bait caster. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what's in that lake. <laughs> yeah, what's in that lake? Is, is there sturgeon in that lake? Uh, uh, oh, geez. And here's another one. Has anyone ever caught a sturgeon on a kayak? Six foot, 300 pounds. Uh, my, I've got a six and a half footer. Um, while we were shooting the show up on, uh, the Fraser river, we got a nine and a half footer, um, and a lot of them smaller than that, but a nine and a half foot sturgeon, that thing was just massive. Um, yeah, so that gets done. Uh, the thing is, if you're, if you're fishing, moving water for sturgeon like that, you know, you have to set up a, a really good breakaway anchor system, uh, to be safe. Um, Corey Ruth says, Hey Jim. Hey, Corey. Done talking to you, man. Go away, Corey. <laughs> uh, Don, where do I order from? He's in Boise, Idaho. Uh, you have a dealer locator on your site, don't you? Yep, yep. So, so yeah. the fly reels order direct from you at... Um, yeah, they can go. We have a dealer locator as well, so they can um, get them on, on our site or go on the dealer locator and find the closest retailer to you or the you know, shop that you work with. 
Um, you know, I know the fly guys, it seems like, you know, that you could be from Montana and you contact your whoever in Jacksonville, Florida, because they always take care of getting your, your stuff ready for your trips or you do it. You know, people, people have a trust relationship in their shops, not the next, next door shop. So, um, there's a, we've got some solid, uh, retailers for our fly, um, that, just look online. Um, they can take care of you. If you have any questions, you can always call us and we'll help you to um, figure, figure out what you need. And and again, you can see all the, uh, and I'm, I'm going to pop this thing up here real quick. Um, Hope it works. Up, 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 uh, there we go. It'll work. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There is uh, the website and of course, lots of information on there on all the conventional reels, the fly reels. You can see, uh, we can click on any of these and bring up all the information. Um, you do have the star drag. Uh, you still have the SM? Yes, we still have the SM and it's selling strong. So it's always when the fish bite from the beach, it goes through the mat. I mean, it's really, really strong right now. So a lot of people are fishing out in North Carolina and up the, up the beaches. So uh, right now that's a, a hot one for us. I can even bring it up. It's like, man, there's the SM. So it's a star mag and that thing makes insane amount of drag. If anybody wants a reel that they can really hammer the drag on, that's the one. It's the silent stalker. No one knows how much she can make until you mess with her. Uh, let's see. We get knock out some more of these questions. Um, uh, I have the SG. And I do like it, but do you have other handle options? We're coming with that right now. So uh, the new power handle will be available in the next, let's uh, say, six weeks. So And the longer crank arm. And the longer crank arm. That's why I have you, Jim. You remind me of things like this. <laughs> longer crank arm. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. Here again, listen to your comments in a few hours. Kayaking in Spain. I cool. I love the fact that, I mean, I really, it really is cool that we get uh, so many viewers from all over the world here. Um, what's that? Corey Halibut. I don't tuna. know when that question came in. Just uh, tuna. Corey, tuna. <laughs> uh, are are um, we speaking fish? <laughs> <perfect. laughs> Corey, you can't pick on Corey. Corey's um, going to do a whole thing tomorrow, for, like teaching. Like there's 5,000 kids out at this location in Virginia beach and like trying to coach little kids to fly cast. That's a tough one. So he must be drinking already or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know he is a phenomenal fly caster. Uh, yeah. And he, he put together that deal uh, about uh, the backwater, the back bay. Yeah. That's Great deep. film. Yeah. It's, Good dude. Um, Ricky asks if, if they can send the handles in for a retrofit. Yep. Yep. All the reels. Anybody has some old styles, uh, new style. I mean, whatever you want, you can bring it, send them in. Um, it's always nice to, it's great seeing like a first gen release come in. I mean, it's got boat rash all over, but it's still out there just, you know, working. So I love seeing them. Um, we get, we can take care of them. Uh, Reginald also wanted to ask if you can make a longer and wider clamp like the cork puppy style clamp for us who fish deckhand style rods plus longer studs for rods with uh, like the Seeker Alua's. Yeah, like, those things are like this big around. I mean, they're they're massive huge. diameter. Mm -hmm. So we were um, when I was sitting down with the guys from Big Rock, the West Coast uh, reps were like, "Hey, is there what can we make it make a West Coast style?" And that's where the long crank arm came up. So first was we're going to put a long crank arm. We're looking at different clampings. Um, just because, you know, East Coast, not too many people use deckhand rods. It's, it's rare. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those things, trying to make things universal, simple, but yet, you know, bolt on another foot and then the foot and the clamp work together. Chad Johnson, I use mine on the kayak. Only issue I have is the knob on the handle sticky all the time. I tried lubing it. What do you re recommend? It's a truth SG. Yep. All right. So yours has the bronze uh, bushings in it and the new ones have this IGUS material. The IGUS materials need no lubrication. 
the bronze ones do need lubrication. But if you send it in, we can we can go through it and see what we can do. We can we can retrofit you pretty easy. Uh, Mike McKenna, Wes probably asked before, but how did you get started in the fly reel production? We did answer that earlier. So if you want to go back and watch the show later, um, a, a replay of the show, it, it's already on there. And I would let him answer it again, but we're actually pushing on being on air for an hour already. So, um, and so we don't need to go over that one again. Uh, Dominic, uh, GT here in Hawaii, get 200 pounds. I battled them off a kayak with my LG reel. Yeah, I bet. And uh, again, those are these, the nice thing is, is these reels put out so much drag. Um, well, what, what are what are the numbers on the drags on the reels? I mean, if it's full spool, so everything that we test is full spool. Um, so you can get much larger numbers, but let's say an LG and LG narrow. LG, I would say you're very conservative. You could say 35 to almost 40 pounds at a full spool. So if you put half spool, you're big, you're 40 plus 45, um, SGs, SG narrows, <clears throat> you're looking at probably 28 ish at a full spool. And then if you put half a spool, because if you're in Florida and you're fishing, you know, 50 foot of water for grouper, you don't need all that line. Um, if you're worried about the six to one ratio, then you're going to slow it down by doing that. But yet you're going to get, you could get 35, pounds of drag no problem out of the reel so and the fly reels the bf makes about 30 um the mf makes about 30 and the sf makes like 25 <laughs> and the thing is you look at those numbers and it's like okay uh, this reel makes 35 pounds of drag have you ever pulled 35 pounds of drag it's ridiculous <laughs> it's like yeah you need yeah it's really like you know really the 12 to 15 to 18 pounds it's kind of a comfort I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Right. I think they're pulling a lot more than that, but they're not. Uh, Donald says, Wes, good to see you again. When are you going to get in a kayak? <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, we again. Did, well, we kept planning. Uh, we, we tried to plan some shoots together last year, and it seemed like you were on a trip or just our schedules never lined up to get you back out there. And then, again, this whole move and everything, you just didn't have the time to get away. So definitely, uh, if nothing else, just come and visit me in San Diego. Or how about you just come next the couple more weeks? You're here. That's true. I'll be uh, I'll be out visiting you in uh, the middle of June. Sounds good. That sounds fun. Uh, how do you feel about PMR uh, modifying your real yeah. Mac cast control? On no, no. Um, Jamie at PMR does a great. He's over there in the, uh, the UK. <clears throat> He uh, puts bigger magnets, <clears throat> changes some things inside. Really, it's bigger magnets. Um, control knobs uh, a lot of times we'll make a reel to try to fit the masses and then you can tune them faster you can make them really fast by taking the grease out of the, or, you know light, you know speeding up the bearings but then it's too out of control um, for the masses um, it's already a niche thing to be able to throw that real far um, he takes it to the next level which is absolutely does not void your warranty I don't care I mean I care but like right I mean if you want to hot ride your car I'm still gonna cover it I'm not gonna be like the Chevrolet dealership, like you open the hood, you don't have warranty. I'm like, hey, it's okay. And if you do, if something happens and somebody goes in a reel and they have a mishap when they're in it, don't worry. I mean, we make all the parts. Um, we'll figure it out and we'll get it straight. And we're not, you know, it's never a big deal. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Rodrigo, hi from Brazil. Uh, there are many fishing kayaks here too. Uh, yeah, I was in, uh, got to fish in Brazil last year. It was a beautiful, beautiful place um and very nice live um carlos says the lefty anglers thank you how's that left-handed two-speed star drag coming <laughs> <You're> what <laughs> isn't it friday night already no <laughs> um no yeah lefties um the star the original star the reason why it wasn't um quick to like the other lever drags the lever drags we made lefties pretty quick after we made it and knew that people wanted them because of symmetrical shapes and stuff, we could do it. The SMSS was not so easy. It has a man, like the drive cover, the drive plate. You have a whole bunch of other stuff inside of it that you just couldn't flip over and do it in the opposite direction. 
but the new SG narrow star <clears throat> then can will be able to go both left and right pretty easy so it should be much like her and and also they look just like her um, standard reel so i think i got something like one of the prototypes actually i have it with a printed long arm so so there's like the little star the way jim would hold it like this yeah i mean look at that reel that is such a I mean, it's such a comfortable reel to fish with. I mean, guys, if you like vertical jigging um, and want to like a small, powerful reel, that SGN is amazing. So, like, the difference between their regular, like before, you remember how it would be a lot different looking? They're not so different anymore. So, oh, right, right, right. You know, so it actually is the same main case now. So, that helps us at the shop and, you know, to make them ready and lefty is not going to be a big deal. So I'm definitely thinking about all the lefties and, and I know that there's like six of y'all that's out there that every time, if I take one photo in the morning, I'm getting ready to post it on Instagram. I'm like, I'm going to get it. When's the lefty lefty star coming, you know? So when it does come, we'll have them. We'll just post pictures all day, 24 <laughs> seven. Awesome. Uh, we're going to crank out a couple last questions and then uh, we'll be shutting her down here. Uh, Ruben uh, might've been asked already had some connection issues but uh, are you thinking about uh, the spinning reels being fully sealed? It doesn't need to be just like your brakes on your Porsche. If it's good stuff in there, it can get wet. So yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, sealed. I don't believe, I mean, there'll be blocks, but not like seals. Um, I don't believe in that, um, but it'll be tough. Um, I promise you that. And hopefully we can make it like some Japanese stuff too. <laughs> Uh, Ricky says, uh, great show guys. What size t-shirts do you guys wear? Well, I'm an XL if you're sending shirts. <laughs> I'm a large. Um, one thing that Ricky's got going now, uh, is he is organizing trips to, um, Pago Pago in, uh, American Samoa. So I, there's some big fish there. So maybe, maybe yes. that's where we need to go, Wes. Yes. I'm down. Ricky. Pick me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap it up here, Wes. I can't thank you enough, as always, for being a supporter of the show and for joining me here. It's always great information and great fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Likewise. Um, again, if anybody wants to see the reels, it is Siegler.fish. You don't need to type in www. <laughs> so check him out at Siegler.fish. Uh, Wes has, again, kindly uh, offered to give a reel of your choice to one of our participants in the show. Um, I will give that, again, 24 hours. So people who are watching on the replay, make sure you type in their replay and share it with your friends. And um, that way we know that you are you have watched it and you are entered. But uh, do that and you will be entered and I will do the random drawing at some point tomorrow. Um, again, Wes, thank you so much. I'm going to drop you down, but stick around because I want to talk to you afterwards. All right. Uh, thanks. So I'm going to drop you down here really quick. Um, so yeah, if you are going to be in the, if you're in the St. Augustine, Florida area, Saturday, May 18th, uh, we'll be doing the uh, seminar at the, uh, Guy Harvey Oceanfront Resort in St. Augustine from 2 to 5 p.m. May 18th. So I hope you can join us. Uh, probably, you know, kind of 50-50 chance that we'll do a live show next week. And if we do, it'll be from Florida. Uh, the week after that, uh, we will have Amanda. She's been a guest with us before. Amanda Wilson from Shark Shield is going to join us. So I hope you can join us for that. Everybody, thanks again for joining us. If you're getting out on the water, please make sure to wear your PFD. And keep your paddle right side up. You take care. Oh.